Hey, this video is inspired by someone who contacted me who was trying to become a QuickBooks Pro Advisor and she wasn't able to pass the test and there was seven questions that she didn't know how to answer. So I'm gonna go through the answers to those questions and kind of her situation. So I've been talking a lot about the QuickBooks Pro Advisor certification for, on QuickBooks Online Accountant. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, definitely check out my first video where I tell you how to get it, what it is, and what the benefits are. I'll leave that video linked down below. And if we haven't met before, I'm Morgan. I'm a bookkeeper from finepoints.biz and my goal is to help you guys get organized. So I did have a subscriber message me. She said she's 19 years old. She's trying to pass the test, but she hasn't been able to. She um, used up her three tries that you have and then you have to wait a period of time. So she's trying to study and get the questions answered that she um, is having a hard time with. And of course, I'm not in the business of tutoring for this exam, so please don't send me all your questions. But um, this is just an example of if you do have those hard questions, how you can work through them and where you can find the answers and how you can use, you know, it's an open book test, open book, open internet test. So you can find the answers that you're looking for if you're having a hard time with them. I'll just go ahead and link all the videos that pertain to this topic down below. I have one about how to pass as well, which could be helpful to you guys. Okay, so here are the seven questions. I don't necessarily want to just like, put the questions and answers on the screen because I don't feel like that's the right thing to do if you're learning to be a bookkeeper and you want to know this knowledge, but I am gonna go through them and just talk through them and show you where to find them. So the first one is where can you change the first month of the financial year? So this is important um, in, in case, okay, for like one of my clients, it's a preschool. So they don't do the financial year from January to December. They start their fiscal year in July, I believe, or in the middle of the summer, maybe it's August. So all the reports I want to show the school year instead of the you know calendar year. So you can change your actual QuickBooks account and accounts and settings um, to show the fiscal year. So every time you say, you know, pull me a report of this year, it shows the school year. So this question question is just simply asking where to find that and the options are either a reports the chart of accounts accounts and setting or products and services so if you didn't know that answer i mean i think i knew that accounts and settings is the answer to a lot of things there's a lot of stuff in that accounts and settings button um but i mean you could always go to reports and look and see if you change you can change anything there you can you could go to the chart of accounts to see if you can change anything there and kind of do a process of elimination um to you know be like nope i can't find it there i can't find it there okay it's in accounts and settings just go to accounts and settings and then come and then advanced and right here it says january is the first month of the fiscal year financial year um, you can change that to whatever you want by hitting this button right here you can change it so I'm gonna go over to the answers that I got for all of these questions. You guys, I don't know if these are the right answers or not. So leave me a comment down below if I made a mistake and if I got the wrong answer to any of these questions or if I misunderstood them, but I'm just gonna do the best I can and um, because when you take the test, it doesn't tell you what the right answers are. It doesn't tell you what questions you got wrong and how to fix them. Um, it just tells you either pass or fail for the online certification. So again, I don't know, but I am showing you the process of how you can find these answers out. All right, and the next one is just about the QuickBooks mobile app. So this is actually a fairly basic question. It asks, what do you need to do to enable the mobile app? And so I think this one, they're kind of like trying to trick you almost or trying to make it seem more complicated than necessary. You know, they're like, oh, you need to enable it here or you need to call the QuickBooks helpline and get them to add it to your account. But no, you don't need to do any of that. All you need to do is go to your app store on your phone and download the mobile account. So if you've ever worked with the mobile account, you'll know the answer to that question automatically. Let me know in the comments if it took you a couple tries to pass the Pro Advisor test or what level you're on. Have you got your advanced certification yet? That is one of my goals to start working towards and studying for. I've heard that one is harder. Let me know in the comments where you're at. And also if you have any other test taking tips about how to make this test successful. And the next question again is about that accounts and settings area. And I'm gonna show you some screenshots of this one because this one was a little bit, you, it took a little bit more digging to find out, um, but it's asking what can be changed in the accounts and settings. And it says pick three of the five options. So then of course, simply, you just have to go to the accounts and settings and figure out which things you can change there. All right, so what can you turn on in accounts and settings? Again, you wanna to go to the gear and then accounts and settings. There's tons of different stuff you can change. 
So we're going to start out with looking at the projects. You can turn on projects here, right here, which is how you can organize everything for your clients. And then you can also turn on classes and locations right here. For one of my real estate clients, um, they had different buildings. So they wanted kind of like a mini profit and loss statement for each building. So we tracked everything in classes. So everything was assigned to a certain class for that. So right away, you can automatically see, I believe it's in the advanced where you can um, change products, you can change classes and locations. Um, and then there's three things left in the test options. And two of the things you might not know, I didn't know what they were first, right off that, CIS and VAT. VAT is a tax thing, I just Googled that. Um, so that is not applicable in the accounts and settings area. And then budgets is a totally separate area, so that's not the right answer. Um, and then, so I had the CIS, um, leftover. So I was like, hmm, I wonder where you changed that. Like, I didn't know what that was. So I just Googled CIS in QuickBooks Online and then it had like a bunch of stuff and a whole tutorial. It turns out it's something specifically for construction companies. And you do have to go to the chart of accounts to turn that CIS on and off. And again, this is kind of confusing because I looked in my sample company and I didn't see that exact function. But the point is, as you're taking the test, be creative, use the resources you have, Google things if you don't know what they are, look up this in QuickBooks Online and that will help you find the answers. So two of the three answers I knew I could find right away and then the third one took a little bit of Googling. And the next question had to do with adding users. So if you wanna add your client as a user, someone who can use QuickBooks Online, or if you wanna add your accountant, um, you can give them different permissions. So I'm gonna to go to the screen recording to show you guys what I found for this answer. And the question it was basically asking you what tasks can the person do if you give them this permission. All right, so this talks about adding a standard user. So in this case, you just want to go to the gear again and then manage users. And this is where you can add your clients or add your accountants. So in this case, to see what different options are, I would just add the user, pretend like you're actually gonna add it, add it as a standard user, which is what the question asked. And then it's gonna tell you within here what different levels of these users can do. So in this example, it had limited users and it was just for customers. So in this case, if you are able to just deal with customers within QuickBooks, you can enter estimates, invoices, and receive payments. So that are that is the three things that they asked about. So you, those are the three answers to that question. All right, and the next question talks about how to make your profit and loss statement um, say months instead of the year. And in this question, it wanted you to select the three that apply out of the five options. All right, and this last one is the one that kind of got me tripped up the most. Um, so this is in the report section, you go to a profit and loss and they wanna know, right now it's just the total, they wanna know how to get it to, do, to go by months. And there's three correct answers. So the easiest way that I always do it is to just use this drop down and say by months and then click run report. And it's gonna show you the breakdown, how much you made in January, February, each month and what the totals are for that. And then the other way you can do it, if you again just have this basic profit and loss statement is you can go to customize right here and then columns, this column section and then months and run report and it gives you the exact same thing. And then again, starting over, if there's a whole bunch of different reports down here, so there's one right here that's profit and loss by month, that's what you can click on or you can also type it into this search bar right here and it'll find it. Profit and loss by month and then it'll automatically pull up this profit and loss by month for the current year. So those are the three ways you can do that. Um, for some reason, how they describe this customized thing with the, this column button, it wasn't making sense to, me, sense to me at first. So I kind of went down the rabbit hole of trying the other things because one of the options was look in the accounts and settings and see if you can um, you know, make a standard report in here. So I looked through there, I didn't find it there. And kind of by process of elimination, I was able to search around and figure out that they were looking for me to click this customize button here. So once you do it, it's actually quite straightforward. There's those three ways to um, break it down by months. And another way I thought of that they didn't even mention is you could do a custom report. 
so you could save it and then you could it would be listed here then you could just click right there and it would have the one by month that's actually what i do in my business all right this next question i had to read a few times and kind of understand what they were asking before i could tell what the right answer was so i'm going to read the question to you it's down here on my computer um your client has two bank accounts one for the sales of products and one for service products so they kind of separate their income what can your client do to help make sure that customers put deposit the money into the right account so there's two things going on here you're helping your client help their customers and this one i just read all the answers and by process of elimination i figured out which was the right one so first of all should they create a different company file um, that doesn't really make sense because just having two bank accounts, they don't need to create a whole nother QuickBooks account or a company file. That's what that is. The next option is, should they create a bank rule for that? And, um, a bank rule might be helpful once the money comes in, but that doesn't actually help the customer put the money into the correct account. So remember, you're trying to figure out when the customer is paying your client, they want to direct the money to the right place. So bank feeds is, or a bank rule would actually happen later on in the process. Okay, the third option is that the client will call them and remind them that probably isn't the answer they're looking for because you don't want to be calling all your clients just you know when QuickBooks could automate this process. All right, and then the last answer is what I chose as the correct one. Use the custom form styles to create two invoice templates. So basically you are sending these customers a specific invoice and that will tell them where to pay or where to put their money. Because then you as the bookkeeper will set this up ahead of time. So you will send the customer the correct invoice and then they click on that and they pay and it's automatically gonna go into the right spot that you set up. And it says you want to add the relevant bank details to the footer of each section. So I've actually never come across this exact situation. I've never had to do this, but just by process of elimination, that is the answer that I would choose. All right, and this question is kind of like the last one, but it has to do with expenses instead of income. So your client records two different types of travel expenses, air and train fares. They would like to be able to report against these separately and also like them grouped together. So they kind of want to see these expenses in different ways. So they want to see all their travel expenses, but they also want to be able to break them out if they need to. So there's, again, process of elimination. I just read through all the options to see which one I thought would make the most sense. So the first one talking about creating account codes for air and travel, and that wasn't quite what you what they're asking you to do. Um, the next one was talking about splitting a transaction. So if you have a transaction, you can split it into different expense categories. So say you bought you know hundred dollars worth of things on Amazon, but you know part of it was for office supplies and part of it was for office furniture. So that is when you would want to use a split. So this doesn't really apply because the train and the air expenses are already separate, but they just want to be able to see them um, either grouped together or not. All right, the next one is use a third party app, which you don't need to do. And then for the fourth one, which is um, set them up as sub accounts. This is the answer that I thought was correct. I'm gonna show you the screen recording of how I found that answer. And they are just wanting you to go into the chart of accounts and um, create sub accounts. So you can see right here, for example, you have landscaping services and then you have a bunch of things under landscaping service. So little bit, little sub accounts. Um, and anytime you edit, an account you can say this is a sub account and then you can pick what you know where you want it to go what you want it to go under so good luck on your tests i hope this was helpful and brings you just a little bit closer to your goal of being a bookkeeper or rocking your bookkeeping business if you already got one